Hello, in this video we will discuss about the non-shivering thermogenesis. So first of all we should need to understand what is the shivering thermo thermogenesis. So the shivering thermogenesis is the quick time during the cold time and sudden the cold will uh, stimulate the shivering thermogenesis will later on convert into the non-shivering thermogenesis through a cell signaling. So in this way the shivering thermogenesis the muscle contraction and relaxation continuously at to vibrate body and for production of heat due to the muscle contraction and relaxation. So in this way uh, our body is contained basically the brown adipose tissue as well as white adipose tissue. So the brown adipose tissue is very important for the non-shivering thermogenesis while the continuously contraction and relaxation will produce heat in the form of ATP and this is the non-shivering thermogenesis will be after some hours will be convert into the non-shivering thermogenesis through endocrine system. So first of all I want to say that is the autonomic nervous system. Autonomic nervous system contains sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. But the parasympathetic nervous system is the rest and digest response. While the sympathetic nervous system will activate for the fight and flight response. So in this way the fight and flight response will stimulate the higher brain cortex, cortex to the hypothalamus and hypothalamus will produce the adenocorticotropic releasing factor. This adenocorticotropic releasing factor will st stimulate to the anterior pituitary gland to produce the adenocorticotropin hormone and this adenocorticotropic hormone will release and stimulate to the adrenal gland and uh, uh, as well as the noradrenergic neuron will also stimulate the quick response but in this case the later on will produce the adenocorticotropic will bind with the adrenal gland to stimulate the norepinephrine hormone this norepinephrine hormone will target to the so will target to the uh, tissues for binding with the tissue to give the primary signal to the secondary signal for the production of heat so let's begin to understand another mechanism for production of uh, stimulate the thyroid gland is also play important role for the thermogenesis so here i am drawing again the hypothalamus which that stimulate due to the cold weather and the it is the later on will produce but the quick response was the previous uh, adenocorticotropin but here is the thyrotropin releasing factor which stimulate to the anterior pituitary gland to produce the th thyroid stimulating hormone. This thyroid stimulating hormone will bind with the thyroid gland which contains cell thyroid follicles here you can see in this diagram. After the binding with the thyroid gland to, uh, to release the T3 and T4 triiodothyronine and thyroxine will go into the blood circulatory system so it means the endocrine hormone. So after this the thyroid stimulating hormone will produce trigger the T3 and T4 will invaginate directly into the cell through a T3 and T4 transporter and in this way the target tissue will, uh, uh, will produce the metabolic heat. So the target tissue is this and in this way the target tissue the uh, rise body temperature increase basal metabolic rate of body cells due to the molecular effect we will discuss in this time here. So in this way the target tissue require the uh, T3 and T4. So in this way the T4 will convert into the T3 inside of the cell also. So the target tissue that has uh, rise the body temperature. So here I am uh, will produce the heat. Here I am um, uh, discussing about the uh, our production of thyroxine and triiodothyronine will give the negative feedback for inhibition of our production of thyroid hormone to the hypothalamus for shut down the continuous stimulus stimulating so in this way the negative feedback for inhibition of our production of thyroid hormone if the heat will be produced more so the conservation as well as the balance of the heat production is very crucial for our body because the higher metabolic rate will disrupt the chemical uh, catabolism and anabolism so here let's begin to understand here I am not drawing that is the not things uh, basically the adrenal gland produce the norepinephrine so remember 
so after this production of norepinephrine will target the tissue for the thermogenesis the quick so the quick thermogenesis we will discuss here so basically is the thyroid gland is important play role for the uh, invagination to the cell through a direct and in this way on the other hand here is the target tissue for norepinephrine will bind with the norepinephrine receptor so in this way here you can see this norepinephrine will bind with the uh, uh, g couple protein receptor which contain a beta trimeric uh, protein beta alpha and gamma alpha a subunit contain a GDP in the form of inactive will activate by the GTP uh, to provide the G, uh, phosphate group to convert the GTP alpha GTP activated will bind with the adenylate cyclase enzyme which that is present in the plasma membrane of the cell and in this way the ATP will be used for the production of the cyclic AMP and pyrophosphate will be released and in this way the cyclic AMP in this time the second messenger and the ligand was the norepinephrine the first messenger after this the protein kinase inactive will be converted into the protein kinase activate activated and in this way the ATP used to produce the HSL human sensitive lipase and in this way the human sensitive lipase will trigger the triacyl glycerol in the uh, brown fat to produce a free fatty acid and glycerol in this way the lipos li lipolysis will be increased during the non shivering thermogenesis will decrease the fat and in this way the decreasing of the fat to produce the free fatty acid and glycerol and that's go into the free fatty acid convert into the acyl acyl coa and after this acyl coa the carnitine uh, uh, acyl coa transferase enzyme used to carnitine bind with acyl carnitine conversion and in this way the carnitine shuttle mechanism in this way the carnitine is very important for the translocation of the acyl coa and in this way the acyl coa coa will be released and acyl carnitine formation this that go into the acyl translocase acyl carnitine translocase enzyme are present that protein which that is a channel like protein will move inside and this acyl carnitine will convert into the acyl coa by the binding of the coa through a carnitine will be released and in this way the carnitine will back move so it we it means a mo mobile protein also it is known as and in this way the cycle will begin for the transportation of the acyl coa and in this way the acyl coa shuttle mechanism will be occur which that is the acyl coa will not move inside directly so in this way the acyl coa will convert by the beta oxidation to produce the acetyl coa and this acetyl coa will go into the krebs cycle to produce the fadh and nadh2 uh, sorry nadh and fadh2 so this nadh and fadh2 will move into the electron transport chain and oxygen used so the oxy uh, Aero, uh, aerobic respiration to produce the proton pump outside from the inside so the inside so in this way the uncoupled protein 1 UCP1 will produce heat so this was the mechanism for production of heat but let's begin to understand the adaptive cold thermogenesis and activated thermogenesis at thermoneutrality during the thermoneutrality it means the thermo uh, normal temperature we increase our body temperature by this mechanism let's begin to understand so that glucose will be high in the blood circulatory system is known as a hyperglycemia during the cold weather and in this way the glucose will be high and the triglyceride will be high and in this way the uh, cyclic AMP will trigger the protein kinase A and also also the 5 uh, di iodinase type 2 enzyme are present in this way the it will convert the t4 to t3 in the active form and that is the useful t3 from the thyroid gland produce and in this way here is the free fatty acid will produce the ucp1 u uh, uncoupled protein 1 and in this way the produce heat and heat as well as reactive oxygen species so the oxi oxidative damage will be occur and in this way there are many reasons but here I am not describing about that but here is the level of glucose will be high so the level of glucose will be high and lipolysis will be high beta oxidation will be high because the breakdown of the fatty acid will be high and mito respiration will be high and oxygen breathing will be 
more and mitobiogenesis will be double and in this way for the production of mitochondria for respiration as and produce heat and antioxidant will be increased due to the oxidative damage clearance and the mitoitophagy is basically possibly occur so here let's begin to understand the t4 and t3 will in move inside into the cell and the 5 diodinase type 2 enzyme will convert the t4 to t3 and in this way the t3 will we will discuss here t3 is basically important for the binding with the dna of the nucleus to transcriptional factor after the transcription factor to produce the heat as well as synthesis of protein synthesis and lipolysis due to the lipase activity will be increased through a enzyme production from the globular protein basically the enzyme so in this way the transcription will be occur from the dna so in this way the t3 is very important for the production of the mitochondria repair as well as the on the other hand the mitochondrial dna will bind with the transcription factor through t3 and on the other hand here is the glucose will be high so hyperglycemia will go into the glycolysis to produce pyruvate and also produce the atp and nadh so on the other hand here is the mitochondria will produce heat with the same mechanism and human sensitive sensitive lipase enzyme and lipophagy will be occur and in this way the damaged organelle will convert into the autolysosome for the recycling to produce more mitochondria and replication of the mitochondria will be more and here is the amino acid is also required for the production of feed through a acetyl coa conversion so let's begin to understand the glucose uptake will be more lipolysis will be more beta oxidation will more mitorespiration will double and mitophagy will be double and antioxidant enzyme will be increased and metabolism will be high so all these things about the non shivering thermogenesis i am describing in this video so please make sure to subscribe like and share ask the question for answer thanks for watching bye